Now, wrapping up an exciting, interesting week in Washington, D.C. At his first press conference as president yesterday, Joe Biden downplayed the situation at the southern border, saying nothing has changed and that the imminent sur- the immigrant surge that we are seeing happens every single solitary year. He also made some other claims that may not be precisely true. We're going to take a look at some of those claims with my first guest, U.S. Representative Greg Murphy. Senator Murphy, or Representative Murphy, I'm sorry. Welcome to the program. Good afternoon, Joseph. I hope you're doing well. Well, I I am well. It's it's, it's a Friday. It's been a week, but I am here, and, and we all are here. We have made it. President Biden has made it as well. But you have uh, you have responded a little bit with your own piece of legislation that you think um, will help the situation at the border. Uh, tell us a little bit about what that is. Yeah, Joseph, you know, I think there is uniform consensus that what happened in the nation's capital um, – on January 6th with a tragedy uh, and a horrific occurrence in our nation's history. I was there. I was in the chamber at the time. We had criminals come into the chamber and uh, and break our laws, and they should be prosecuted completely. The, the result of that has been that Nancy S. Pelosi has tried to maintain an atmosphere of fear in the nation's capital, erecting a 10-foot razor wire fence and putting about 2,300 National Guard um, around the Capitol. The Capitol Police have been very forthright in saying there is no credible threat whatsoever. But still, those 2,300 men and women have been taken away from their homes, and uh, they are guarding a building that doesn't need to be guarded and a complex that does not need to be guarded. On the other hand, at our southern border, because uh, President Biden basically opened the door and said, come, come, come in now. Uh, We're not going to worry about anything. Come in right now. Central America, and we're finding out other countries have been sending uh, people also, um, are flooding our southern border and overwhelming our ability for customs and border control officers to uh, to navigate and take care uh, of the people who are over flooding our border, especially, especially the thousands of unaccompanied minors. So why don't we do something novel? You know, the National Guard was incepted to respond to crises in our country's history. They do that over here in the east on, you know, times of hurricanes and floods. And uh, they've uh, they've been uh, something, a resource uh, that our nation desperately needs. Why don't we actually take them where they're not needed, um, where there is no crisis in Washington, D.C., and take those uh, men and women uh, and send them down to our southern border where there is a true crisis, whether or not uh, President Biden acknowledges it, whether he understands it uh, or or not. Uh, But that's where that's where they're needed. And that's where they ought to be right now, rather than in Washington D.C. Now, I want to I want to talk about the the border situation, but I also want you to say a little bit more about what's going on in Washington D.C. Because those of us who work in Washington D.C. see this giant razor, you know, at least razor across the top of the fence, um, all around the Capitol. It's really inconvenient, depending on where you're trying to go on foot. But why do you think? She's, th- why does this still exist? Is there conversations within the members of Congress about this fence? Um, is there, does anybody perceive a real threat? What do you think the purpose of continuing to maintain this military presence and giant wall around the Capitol is? Well, Joseph, uh, whether we want to acknowledge it or not, um, we're living in a dictatorship right now. We're living in a dictatorship of Nancy Pelosi. She's basically stripped Congress of its committee uh, uh, hearings, um, its due process. And what she wants done, she brings to the floor and has the votes to do it and moves on. She has uh, basically put a vice grip on Washington, D.C. Republicans, we want to tear the wall down. I mean, remember they said walls don't work? The Democrats (laughs) said that? There is no reason whatsoever. It is a political fence. It is not a protective fence. It is her trying to maintain an emotion of fear around the nation's capital and uh, I, I just she's un, it's unconscionable. She how does that serve? And how does that serve her purposes? It's been over half a billion dollars in expenditures. Yeah. How do you think she benefits from trying to maintain an atmosphere of fear? Well, because of what happened on January 6th, it's a great amount of emotion from surely Democrats, independents and a lot of Republicans on what happened that day. And so she wants to maintain that um, that that fear of uprising, that fear of uh, of violence that did occur on that day. But she wants to, for political purposes, 
continue that fear as long as she can. Well, let's talk now more about what is going on at the border and, and what can be done about it. And, and your proposal to move troops from Washington, D.C. to the border to do that is, is one of them. Now, President Biden addressed this yesterday at the um, at his press conference. And, and we're going to I'm going to play one clip here and, and Bobby get clip one ready. And then I'm going to let the congressman uh, go ahead and respond to this. So go ahead and play that. Well, look. The idea that I'm going to say, which I would never do, that if an unaccompanied child ends up at the border, we're just going to let him starve to death and stay on the other side. No previous administration did that either, except Trump. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Now, do you think it's fair to characterize the alternative to what's happening now as simply letting kids starve to death? No, that's a, that's that's utter um, just utter, uh, utterly disgusting that what Biden said, because that's not true about President Trump. That is not what happened at all. But it's sad that um, Biden has played upon the fears of Central America. Hey, send your kids up here now unaccompanied and we'll take care of them. No border guard, no border guard is ever going to allow a child to die, if at all possible. And, um, you know, these kids, as I understand, one did die uh, in the desert today. Um, but uh, that's just absurd. And uh, again, it's, uh, it's something, uh, uh, his slurred speech a little bit. I just wonder who's really yeah. calling the shots. Well, I, I think that's an important point, you know, because in politics, there's a lot of rhetoric that's lobbed back and forth and people might use hyperbolic language just because they're excited or because they think it will play well to that particular audience. The accusation that uh, President Trump would just let kids starve to death um, rather than help them is not just an indictment of President Trump because, as you pointed out, and I want to just drive this point home, what he's essentially alleging is that the good men and women who work at the border and, and worked there under President Trump and certainly everybody who works there under President Biden was probably there under President Trump as well. And the accusation there really is an indictment on the the character of the people at the border to suggest that they uh, would just stand there and watch children starve to death because uh, uh, allegedly or Im implicitly in that case, um, President Trump told them to do that. And so I, I do think in our language, we, 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 it's not just an indictment on the president, is it? No, no, it's not. And it, it's a tragic uh, bunch of words that the president put out. Um, I, I'm not sure, uh, really, as I said, who's calling the shots, but it's just totally false. And the, I mean, I've been down on the border, Joseph. I'm going down in two weeks. They're good, hardworking uh, individuals that are just trying to help uh, help our nation. Well, if your bill were to pass and, and if you were to move the troops who are currently occupying Washington, D.C. To, to the southern border, what specific roles do you think they could be involved with that would help the situation down there? Well, Joel, um, I, I'm not under a delusion that Pelosi would allow that bill to, uh, to, uh, to go through. But uh, regardless, it still brings what I believe is a actually logical uh, alternative to what's going on. You know, the real winners in all this, uh, Joseph, sadly enough, are the drug cartels. The drug cartels now, because our borders and customs control officers have been overwhelmed, are now allowed to uh, – are able, rather, to push drugs in at an alarming rate um, into our country. The same thing with illicit cash and, sadly enough, also with human trafficking. They're able to bring especially young women, uh, a third of whom are actually abused uh, migrants into this country – uh, sexually abused, they're able to push that human traffic against this country. And under the guise of safe passage, these individuals are essentially sold into slavery. And so, you know, Biden and his administration are complicit in allowing an increase in human trafficking and an increase in narcotics coming across our border. You, and, you know, we, uh, you know, I think our National Guard could very well help the, Nash, the, uh, the border control help us uh, paro uh, patrol our borders. I'm going to play one more because there's several things that, that President Biden said yesterday that raised some eyebrows. And we're going to go ahead and play clip two, and then I'm going to let you respond to this one as well. Go ahead, Bobby. If you take a look at the number of people who are coming, the vast majority 
the overwhelming majority of people coming to the border and crossing are being sent back, are being sent back. Thousands, tens of thousands of people who are, who are over 18 years of age and single people, one at a time coming, have been sent back, sent home. Now, that's what President Biden had to say. Do you have uh, any different intel on that issue? Are we actually sending the vast majority of people back? That's utter nonsense. Uh, I read a report today that it's less than 20 percent, probably even lower than that, that are actually being sent back. So, again, I don't know where he's getting his information. I don't know who's feeding it to him. I'm not sure if he's really in touch with reality. Uh, of what's going on at the border. He, of course, has refused to even, number one, acknowledge it's a crisis, two, um, go and visit. And, uh, you know, the, the cream puff questions sent by the mainstream media at these, uh, at these fake uh, re- uh, news conference or this fake news conference, the first one he's had during his entire presidency, I just bemoan the fact that our commander in chief, I'm not sure is all there and sure doesn't know what's going on with the crisis that he caused at the border. He also implied yesterday at his press conference that uh, all these people are coming to the border now uh, post-election because he's just a much nicer guy than Donald Trump was. Do you think that actually has anything to do with it, or is there something else going on? No, no. Well, I mean, you know, people had sometimes troubles with with Trump's personality, and I get that. I, I truly get that. But we're also a nation of laws. And I think it's more the fact that, hey, uh, there are no laws here. There are no immigration laws. You can come and and, uh, just come right into our country and we won't prosecute you or we won't prevent you. That's what the issue is. It has nothing to do with niceness of a president. Well, Congressman Murphy, we thank you for your time. And I I thank you for the proposal because I think it it sheds light on on a really important point that we are guarding things where there are no risks for political purposes. And we are not guarding things where there is a real risk also for political purposes. So thank you very much for your time and your service to our country.